What's up, Big Bear Nation? And welcome back to the homestead. So today, I'm going to take more plants out to the big garden and kind of wanted to show you what we have done with free plants and free bamboo. So take you with me, I'll walk over here and go see what's going on. What you doing? Tying it off. Mm -hmm. So I have bad news. What? I still have two flats of tomatoes to plant. <laughs> but <laughs> they're not indeterminate. <laughs> so <laughs> we won't have to make more trellises and tie them up. <laughs> oh, that's good. But now I need you to come up with an idea on how to trellis <laughs> bush tomatoes. <laughs> That's easy. Yeah? yeah? So, if it's that easy, how easy is it compared to this? Well, it's a little bit more difficult than this. Yeah? Yeah. So, you think this was simple? Yeah, once I remembered my lashings, yeah. thanks to Corporal's Corner on <laughs> YouTube. And let's be honest, who really did all of the lashings? Me and Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> you know, I taught Carol. Funny story. <laughs> That's the wonderful world of filming. Y'all kept messing me up, making me, <laughs> making me stand all awkward. And y'all kept moving the bamboo around. And You're like, I can't tie it upside down. I, I gotta stand the other way. <laughs> y'all kept picking on me and messing with me. Uh, so. I mean, I, tie, I think we tied about the same amount. I think you tied, what, three or four? I don't know. On a scale of one to 10, how easy was this project? Including going to get the bamboo? No. No, don't include going to get the bamboo. <clears throat> or do I include whacking and trimming the bamboo? Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably about, I don't know. Is that a scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. How, um, what, how hard How hard, it was? yeah. Probably like a three or a four. So this is a fairly easy. Yeah, it's just repetitive stuff uh -huh. that gave me like tennis elbow from taking the machete and yeah, from whacking all the because we started down. right. If you saw the video where we went and got the bamboo, I think we, everybody saw that video. <laughs> we started with bamboo that had just been cut, and so it still had all of its limbs and leaves and everything on it, and so we had to bring it here let it sit for a little while <laughs> we i was riding shotgun it was we <laughs> i'm gonna talk to you about you were cutting up all the bull all the, all no, the no 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 i was filming hey baby what you doing <laughs> driving driving why are you driving kind of slow because because <laughs> why my wife is a mean person <laughs> so <laughs> huh? 
So we brought the bamboo home. We let it dry for a little while. Yeah, you were filming like I was doing all the lashings. Jason came out here and he whacked all of the leaves and stuff off of them to make them clean like this. Now these are not completely dry, but they will be. It won't take long for them to, to get completely dry. But we went ahead and did lashing. Now some of the videos we've seen um, people just take all three poles and just kind of put them together and just wrap it around. But with military background and Boy Scout background, between those two things, Mr. Big Bear here decided it was a better idea for us to they lash They hold them. better. <laughs> Look, you can do something the right way one time. Yes. Or you can do it the halfway and then have to repeat it like 12 times. I think the reason why with the people that we've seen do it where it was just wrapped around it is because they want to be able to take them down. And, and I, I guess they're not really thinking about having to redo the, the tying every year with these. We'll be able to just close them, them up, up and they'll store fine without yeah. having to worry about I'll, the I'll, lashing. I'll build like a little... L bracket shelf that they got all lay on, on top lay of on, uh -huh. and sit there until the following year. Following and then year. we bring them out, put them in there. We may have to dress them up. They may come. Now I have a question. Do you think this is something we could use for peas? Yeah. So I wonder. Well, I mean, it, you would do better to do like the TP method. You know, like plant the like oh, plant the, the teas. Like I was just wondering the, run, run if it like that. I was just wondering if you could run it up the string, just like how you do the tomatoes. You probably because could. if that's the case, then we really wouldn't have to take these down when the tomatoes come out for the year. And maybe we'll try that just we as an experiment it. to see. We may not have to store these. We may try to do these. So that's a question for y'all. Has anybody ever used these types of trellises with the string? But after using them for tomatoes, when you pull your tomatoes out, have you ever tried to use that same ground and grow beans? I mean, peas on it. I mean, I would be interested. Oh, peas, yeah. Peas we peas. probably could. That would be, yeah, because all you'd have to do is just constantly, like, wrap it around the That's train. what I was thinking. You know, <clears throat> we would may want to go to, a, like, that baling twine, like I wanted to use the, in the thicker beginning. thicker kind. Because mm -hmm. it's thicker. Um... But the peas should be absolutely, there shouldn't be an issue with that, with those. Those should do extremely well on this in the wintertime. So then, technically, we wouldn't really have to have a place to store them. We could just could change out what we're planting. Yeah. And then the following year, we could just move, move the teepees to the next row mm -hmm. and, you know, go to the next row. So this is really, I yeah. don't want to say a game changer, but one, it has freed up... That's a pretty good idea you had there, right? One thing... Like, look at the big brain <laughs> on Robin. One thing it's done is it's freed up all of our cattle panels. Because I was planning on using cattle panels to grow the tomatoes up and let them lay over in the, the kitchen garden. And Jason was very emphatic that he didn't want me to take up all of that real estate for just for tomatoes. Even though tomatoes, you use so many different things for tomatoes, but. Right, but I mean, the cattle panels are, are va valuable real estate that you could do something else with them. I can do beans and cantaloupes and, you know, cucumbers and all that other stuff. Keep pigs in. So the thing is, is that a couple, I mean, we've been growing tomatoes for years and years and years, but it wasn't until a couple of years ago that we started listening to everybody talking about being able to create more airflow from the bottom for the plants. Yeah. And the other thing was, is that I've always come from the background of the more you can fit in somewhere, the better. But through experience of doing it that way and ending up with blossom end rot and pests and different things like that. Last year, when everything started growing out of control, I started pulling suckers. Mm -hmm. We took the suckers and we put them in water and let them grow roots. And then we brought them out here to this big garden. And because I didn't have a whole lot of them, I did space them out. And I thought, you know, let me just try this and see how it works. 
And what I found is not only by them being spaced out, it made it easier to work with each tomato plant because you didn't have one running into the other. The other thing was it made it very easy for me to prune them. And so that's what we, that concept we've adopted for this year's garden. And we are the doing- The really did help last year. Yeah. Um, not necessarily a blossom end rot because that just comes from the ground. That's a calcium deficiency. Well, but when you plant way more than what you're supposed to in one bed, I was planting them too close together too. So they were mm -hmm. fighting for calcium as well. Oh, yeah, there's that. So between those two things, yeah. But the, the uh, what's the one where the, the leaves turn to fungus that, fungus that gets blight. on the, yeah, blight. Yeah. Helps so with that. yeah, and it definitely helps with definitely light. Definitely helps with pest, pest control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do this now. One other cool thing about this system that we've done: the bamboo is free, and the tomato plants. <laughs> the tomato plants were free, weren't they, honey? Yep. <laughs> That's going to be a really tasty free tomato sandwich, isn't it? Nope. <laughs> why not? Because. Because why? We we're supposed to just be getting stuff to get the cows put back up. <laughs> or we were just supposed to be getting minerals or but, whatever other reason why. Look, you can't go past bags <laughs> without stopping. So. But, but I got you. In this row alone, there's 25 tomato plants. And we didn't pay for any of them. So, if Which even... is crazy because they're great. They're healthy. All you had to do was bust up the root ball. Let them soak in that compost tea. Uh-huh. And we came out here and we planted them. Watered, and we planted them in a hot day. A like, hot day. I expected them to kind of not die back, but kind of be a More little droopy. shriveled or droopy. But we, when we put the water, put them in... We put a little bit of compost tea in the hole and then I put them down in there and we side dressed with some more soil and we came out the next morning and they're all nice and perky. So we're getting ready to finish tying these guys up and then I'm going to start on a row of determinate tomatoes so that we can get those going. Those were also orphan tomatoes that's what oh, i'm gonna now call you're gonna them. be like little orphan annie they're little daddy orphans warbucks, right? so yeah i'm big daddy warbucks not you i ain't got the money though i'm just rescuing them <laughs> so i must be what's the um the what was his um helper's name <laughs> you're mrs hannigan <laughs> no not mrs hannigan the other one that was his assistant <laughs> nope you're mrs anyway hannigan. so we love you mrs hannigan <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking oh it is on like donkey kong i'm so now. editing all of this out you know that right <laughs> i'm the one that edits so good luck with that one i got the live stream so anyway and i um, will dog you out on the live stream if you edit that out <laughs> <laughs> if mrs hannigan <laughs> 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 so <laughs> if you liked this video on just a, an overview of how to take some bamboo I've done this not some three shrimp. times now <laughs> because I keep going. it's because you gotta re-look at your boy scout handbook every time you go to tie something oh no it's because I'm laughing calling you Mrs. Hannigan we love you Mrs. Yeah. Hannigan <laughs> So if you liked this video on how we took a whole bunch of free stuff and we've turned it potentially into food, go ahead and check out this video over here on how the I trip. How I suckered into getting all this bamboo. <laughs> That's what it's called. Don't try, to, don't try to dress it up, try to make it all pretty. How did Robin pull one over on Jason <laughs> with getting bamboo right I, here? You were bamboozled. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm. Thank you for stopping by the Big Bear Homestead. God bless. And have a nice day. <laughs>